interpretation of what DIY means. Sidestepping bullshit. Booking your own shows, booking your own tours, putting out your own music. Uh, especially in, in regards to music, booking shows is a lot of bullshit. Not going after that record contract. You know, as a guy in a band, as a guy that hates the electric company, and as a guy that sort of sees how the big money people generally screw around the little guy, and this is more than I've ever thought about it. Just a chance to kind of set your own rules and set your own standards and set your own way of treating people and treating yourself. I think it's more D-I-F-Y, like do it, do it for yourself. I think it's D-I-F-E, do it for everyone. Yourself and everyone. Yeah, that's D-Y-F-Y-E. That's a little mouthful. Yeah, it is a little mouthful. DIY is a lot of things, but as far as here in Dallas, Fort Worth, Denton, a lot of the people that ran the major clubs traditionally for a long time have always gone with safer acts. You know, more conservative forms of bands. No screaming, no noise, no this, no that. There's no promoters to go through or bar sales to keep up with or, you know, heads being counted through a fucking door. Find a house throw a couple bass amps together and use it as a vocal PA <laughs> and fucking rock out. Like having shows in pizza parlors, having shows in art galleries. That excites the crowd when you're face to face with the band and the music's right there in front of your ears and it's not separated by some 10 foot stage. You have a packed room of people, it's hot, it's sweaty, and they're sending you energy to the stage. You take that energy in, and then you send it back through your performance. crowd response is usually a lot more exciting because they don't feel like they're at a Starbucks. They feel like they're actually at like a club seeing something that they're not going to get to see again possibly. It's fun to play in the living room. It's fun to kind of bring people into your home and just let them fuck it all up. Um, our friend needed a place to play, so we thought, you know, why not have, you know, you play here in our backyard. Within like 10 minutes of us playing in the backyard, an old man called the cops. And so we were like, we should move this inside. So we moved it inside and then like, it just felt really like natural and really good. Touring bands come and like, there's like hundreds of people here. And 
Thanks a lot to everyone for coming out. Uh, that was that was Noun's group. They fucking rule. Up yeah. next is Teenage Cool Kids, yeah. followed by Menaguar. Yeah. Fuck! And then Record Hop. Fuck! So stick around. Some of the best shows I've seen have been at, at, at house parties or at little sh shitty tiny club basements because it's like just, you know, right in your face. It's always been a great town for that because they have house parties, they have little weird venues where people can play, and they have established clubs as well. So it's a nice mix, and that's what I think Dallas needs more of. These these shows basically stick out for each other. Like if uh, a show gets shut down at Raw House, uh, you know, we got you know picked up by Eighth Continent. Denton's real fucking hospitable to creativity. It is right now. I hope in five years you can say that with all the you know them building a Walmart. We got Walmart bookends now. This town's sort of been immune to that for a long time. And uh, there's, there's nothing you can do about it. Dallas hasn't been good since, you know, it was a punk rock city back in the late 80s, early, and maybe the early 90s. It was dangerous, but that was kind of what added to the allure of it. And now it's just, you have a subway, you have 7-Eleven, two or three sort of SMU frat clubs to go to, and Coyote Ugly. There's nothing punk rock about any of that. I would have a hard time thinking that any DIY spot, the biggest problem isn't going to be money, you know? The power only got cut off once here, twice, um, and three times. The power's been cut off all the fucking time. The last big one we tried to throw, we didn't even make it till 11. We had five cops show up and told us that we should have rented out a, a stadium. And then followed to say that maybe they wouldn't have shut us down if we were a frat house. And that's always a weird feeling when you're like, oh, you know, there's someone just wandering into my bedroom now. And there's someone who's... <laughs> oh, know, look, he just vomited. <laughs> oh, he just peed a bomb <laughs> all over my bed. You know, it's, we can't have a show every day, or we can't have a show every week. We can have, we can have shows once a month because it's something that, you know, we are doing it out of pocket and our electricity bill is ridiculous. Cops can get called, we can get tickets, whatever. Uh, what happened? Uh, we never knew what the hell we were doing, and it caught up with us. At the same time as uh, several unfortunate events, such as uh, a switch in the landlord, if you will, and uh, some minor vandalism. If any two of those things had happened at once, we would have been fine, but since they all three kind of came to a head at the same time, we uh, were done. DIY places in general, it, it's not going to last forever, and it shouldn't, you know, it, it needs to be cleansed and new crowds of kids and taking the place and carrying the torch and just keeping things interesting and different and diverse. Yeah, huge, huge sense of loss. I got a good job, I got some good bands, and this is more and more every day becoming something where I'm just like, man, I was really fucking proud to be a part of that. And then you walk in the week before you're supposed to be out and you see it just kind of trashed and... And what pisses me off personally about this whole thing is that I don't know that I appreciated it enough, you know? I loved it. I fucking love it. You have to love it, right? A year and a half, throwing money into it and throwing all your time and all your fucking, you know, instead of booking my band, I'm booking everybody else's bands kind of shit. It would be nice to be able to have a place that, you know, paid for itself that had stuff like this. And it would be nice to, you know, have corporate sponsors not have to worry about money, not have to worry about cops or whatever. And there are drawbacks, but it's it's totally worth. I mean, it's give and take. So every show in three years is going to be a house party or a, an art gallery show or something because all the venue venues are going to be closed. It seems like everything's falling apart, but then you realize, wait, this is when it's going to get good. Because the more gentrified and the more mainstream everything gets, well, that's just going to piss off the people that do the cool shit anyway, and it's only going to make them want to do it more. I have faith that something like Secret Headquarters is going to open up again. When, when people see that stuff like this can be done outside of the venue scene or the club scene or whatever, when people see that it can work and there's such good things happening, they have to realize that, like, we have to keep doing this. Like, you know, if it's not the people that ran Secret Headquarters, maybe it's some someone else that has, like, a, a warehouse space or something that's going to open that up or something. Like, something something's going to happen. i
back and please So you can look at me With sincerity sit in my bed